And we have one of the nicest artists in the game. He can he could do it all. He could sing. He can rap. Sing don't rap. Rap don't sing, as he's <laughs> said in his records before. But he's coming all the way from Canada. Goes by the name of B Rob. Try on new single available on all platforms. Undeniable. Go check out that project. Welcome to Sports and Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max. Live two sixty five. I heard radio man. How's it going? Good man. I'm good. I can't complain. I can't complain. I'm here. I'm in the studio. You know what I mean? Working on some new music. Just getting things ready to go, man. Exactly. You're up for a quick winner, you know? Yeah. And, and it, I appreciate you. You're working on Labor Day. And uh, that that's how you have to do it, man. Especially when you're creative, you you don't care about working on holidays. No, nah, no, nah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm here every day, bro. I'm in the studio all the time, 24-7. Mm-hmm. Especially now is the time you got to work, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. we work hard, yeah. Exactly. It. I mean, your music is a testament of your life story and just about your personal growth. What was an area that you grew this year personally? I want to say understanding. Mm. Kind of being able to sit back and evaluate situations. It's kind of helped him but with it, with my writing process as well. Um, kind of allowed me to tap into kind of a deeper space in writing, just being able to kind of sit back, assess things, and kind of understand things from different perspectives. You know what I mean? Uh, see people's outlooks on different situations kind of broadens my ability to kind of view things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As far as understanding, as well as like your team around you, you kind of mm-hmm. keep a close knit because you've kind of learned not to deal with the jealousy. You've mentioned that in your records, not letting other people hold you back. So yeah. how, what's your approach of understanding others? Because that's a big thing, especially around your team. So in, in terms of understanding others around my team? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like those are people I've grown up with my whole life. Um, so, you know, those are people where I don't really have to second guess most of the decisions it is that they make. And I, I, again, like you mentioned, kind of keep a tight knit um, circle for that reason. Um, it's kind of a little bit difficult to start to try to learn people again um, or learn people as they come in. You can kind of be vigilant, but we know people's intentions as things kind of grow. Um, but, you know, I just kind of been kind of been able to keep a small circle around me, people that I've been kind of known since day one. And it's kind of allowed me to kind of keep my mind at ease when I'm not, you know, yeah. doing the music stuff or, you know what I'm saying? So you understand already, you got to keep a small circle when you're in this entertainment industry. Is it to the point now that it's not even worth allowing new people into the circle? Is is it that kind of where you've... I mean, no, I mean, I mean, you know, (laughs) it's always good to kind of expand in certain aspects. So, you know, you won't, you won't grow unless you do new things, unless you experience new things, maybe some new people and things like that. Um, so not not in that aspect, but but just more so in like the closer personal aspect of my life. Um, I kind of have people that are like with me and that have been with me that will continue to be with me. Um, if any kind of relationship stems from the music or from kind of this working environment, then it's cool. But, uh, you know, in terms of like my like personal, you know, friendships and stuff like that, people that I go to or confide in or go to, you know, for advice and things like that, uh, those are more people Um that kind of I've been with for 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 David since day one. So let's get into to the early grind here because I think your debut was back in 2020. So the title yeah. Undeniable, it really speaks to, I think, of a message that you're sending out, out to a lot of people out there. And a lot of people have to take the independent route, even talented people like yours. I was blown away by your music when I listened to it, especially Thank the you. self-titled track Undeniable. Just mm. you can rap and sing uh, crazy. So with Undeniable, was that kind of just a message to the people who didn't give you the chance to kind of over? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Uh, I dropped my first uh, tape, like you mentioned, 2021 is when I dropped my first tape. I dropped my first like single, like uh, end of 2020, so like late December or something like that, or like mid December. Um, but I dropped my first like actual project body of work, 2021. Uh, and you know, quality wise or sonically, it was good. Um, it was good music. You know, I think I've always kind of made good music, but um, it wasn't necessarily recepted in the way I thought it would be. Um, people didn't really receive it uh, you know it was it, it, people weren't really taken to it in droves uh that, that you know what I thought it kind of deserved and it was kind of a, a a moment for me to kind of sit back and kind of assess you know what makes things go what makes things work and is it talent is it hard work is it luck is it a mix between all three things um and I kind of thought that that next project undeniable was a was a it was a body of work that encompassed all of those things you know, there was a lot of luck that happened uh, with things kind of going um, and being in the right place at the right time or, you know, meeting the right people 
Um, the talent has kind of always been there uh, and just kind of things that something that you kind of um, refine and, and, and uh, kind of chisel to perfection. Um, and yeah, like the talent was there, the, the luck was there and the hard work was there, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm in the studio all the time, 24 um, seven. So it was one of those things where combined with all three of those things, this project has to be undeniable and it's supposed to kind of project us or propel us to a place that we haven't necessarily been. And it's done that uh, to an extent. Um, and the music going forward will continue to kind of do that, you know? Yeah. All the labels are definitely missing out. I'm telling you that the contract should be coming in. Is it your goal to sign to a major or are you cool with being independent right now? Um, I, I mean, my goal is to kind of be able to put the people around me and myself in a situation where uh, we're not, we, we, we don't really want for anything. Um, so uh, if that comes through a label deal, or if that comes through maintaining independence, um, whatever kind of makes the most sense. I'm, I'm a pretty logical person. So things, as long as they map out to me and you know they're linear, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with what, what makes sense and you know what is the best for me and the people around me. So. Mm -hmm. How did it feel to sell out? I saw the, the concert in your hometown. And, and where exactly yeah. in Toronto is this this town that you're from? I want to know precisely. Yeah, yeah. I'm the east end. So I'm from Toronto, from Scarborough. Uh, that's Scarborough. The east yeah, it's in the east end of Toronto. Um, and yeah, we sold out by my show was downtown Toronto, so right in the core. Um, and we sold out, it was dope. There's about 500 people in there, so it was crazy. Um, we didn't even, it wasn't some like crazy five, six month promo lead. It was really, I think, maybe a month and a half. Wow. I think that we had. Um, and we, you know, we just kind of pushed it. And it was my first, like, first uh, concert, first performance kind of that we were headlining, uh, and my brand was headlining ST. And um, it was successful, man. It was great. People enjoyed the time, enjoyed themselves. They enjoyed the time. They enjoyed the, the other acts um, that were there. Um, and they enjoyed uh, my set. So I was happy about that. That was definitely a staple moment to uh, what I've been doing so far. How much of an inspiration does Drake and Tory Lane serve throughout your career? Because, I mean, something that the, you have in common with both of them is that you can both rap and sing. And they're great mm -hmm. artists. So how much of an inspiration do they play in, in your background? Especially um, huge, man. Yeah, yeah, huge. I mean, being from the same place is always um, inspiration to kind of be able to navigate through the systems that I'm, I'm currently navigating through. I know that it can be done. Um, obviously, Toronto is not really like America, where there's a bunch of people that have come from New York, a bunch of people from Miami, a bunch of people from Atlanta, uh, where the blueprint's kind of there and it's easy to follow. Um, the blueprint has been there, but it's been it's been created by like the biggest artists in the world. So it's a little bit harder to to to, to follow the, the footsteps of. But um, it's inspiring knowing that they've done it and knowing that I can kind of create my own way uh, within uh, paths that they've set um, or, you know, kind of trailblaze my own my own path. Um, so definitely inspiring and seeing how they do things, how they navigate through things and kind of the way they brought their teams with them, uh, you know, respectively. And kind of that's what I'm looking to do with my team. And you know, obviously, sonically, yeah, like you know, I have the ability to rap and sing and, you know, kind of fits into a certain pocket. So definitely big inspirations to kind of who it is that. Um, I aspire to be mm -hmm. it, 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 your criticisms rap don't sing sing don't rap F your yeah. suggestion uh, that that was definitely a, a, a tough bar right there going at the critics so this is something that you've received from from people that is this people yeah have told you that yeah yeah I mean there's always a um it's not necessarily in a bad way but there's some people who like my music and like it for singing and there's some people who like my music and like it for rapping um and you know the people who love the singing want to hear more singing and the people who want to hear more rapping want to hear more rapping um, and I, it was kind of a statement piece to kind of let people know that um, I do both and I'm going to continue to do both and I want to continue to do both at, uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> at, a, at a high level. Um, that's just something I'm going to continue to do uh, and, 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 you know, kind of, again, chisel uh, both of those skills and uh, kind of make them perfect and, and, and uh, keep working on those things. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah. So the debut was at, in 2020, 2021 was the first single release. So do you mind asking me asking how old you currently are? Yeah, I'm 27. You're 27. So what was this something that you always wanted to do since you were a teenager or a kid? Was the, the field of music always something that you wanted to do? Because um, I've always kind of been in music um, mm. in certain capacities. Um, I was DJing before. OK, so you're a DJ like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was a DJ before. I was a DJ before. Uh, and then COVID kind of hit. And I had stopped um, just because party obviously. stopped all that. Stopped. Yeah. Stopped. And I was just, I've always kind of helped my friends that are artists around me kind of with writing or kind of with melodies or whatever. Um, and then I just kind of found myself in the studio during COVID, you know, nothing really to do. Um, and I was in England at the time and I brought it back to the homies and they were like, yo, this is really good. Um, and I kind of continued and pursued it. And, you know, my, my, my people around me kind of 
I have the mindset, yo, when Rob, you know, when Rob puts his mind to something, um, it's probably it's probably a, a safe bet to to follow through with whatever it is that he said. Um, so you know, my my friends got up and kind of uh, kind of bat, you know batted behind me, and and um, that was the move uh, going forward. So it was it wasn't I wouldn't say something like being an artist was something I always wanted to do as a child. I've always loved music. I've always you know had the ability to kind of hold a note. Um, and always like been in the music space, but being an artist wasn't necessarily a goal until um, a couple of years ago, but it's, it's proven to be pretty fruitful. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I have to hear the story because now we know how you got to be an artist when you received your first set of turntables. Two, oh boy, 2014. Okay. Yeah. 2014. 20, yeah. 2014. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are, are you still considering doing that too? Or are you fully committed? Yeah, to I mean, I, again, it, it, it was a battle of when coming into the music industry of like, um, especially coming as an emerging artist, people taking you seriously. I was pretty, I was a pretty known DJ in my city, um, at least. Okay. Um, and it was kind of a thing of people kind of wanted to take you seriously. Like, is this guy a DJ or is he an artist? Um, and, you know, I was good at both. <laughs> but again, one of those things that people kind of, people are kind of sometimes afraid to see people do more than one thing well, because it kind of confuses them. Um, what do I pay attention to? What do I focus to? It's hard to just kind of you know, lock in on both. So I, I made the decision to kind of put down DJing and focus um, solely on music. And that's kind of where I am. Where kind I'm of like at. Kanye, they put him in the box. You're a producer. You're not going to be an artist. And we saw what he did. He went on to be getting into the fashion, take over music. So that's kind of, mm-hmm. I always like to put people in boxes. So I know yeah. I brought up Tory Lanez and Drake before. Obviously, they, they're going to be in the same box with you because that's where you're from. But what were your, some of your other influences? Because I saw Dance Hall, Afro Beats. You've incorporated all these different genres. So. Yeah, I have a, a certain swing to my music. Yeah. Um, uh, in terms of like other rappers like Jay Z, mm. uh, Mace, um, Lloyd Banks, Fifty Cent. Okay, um, G Unit. Rappers. Yeah, I like the, the smoother, the smoother tone rappers. Um, uh, in terms of like dancehall, like my favorite artists from dancehall are like uh, Vibes Cartel, Popcorn, um, Lovato, uh, uh, Afro Beats. Obviously, big you know Wizkid, uh, uh, Davido fan, um, Burner Boys. Obviously, uh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I dabble in, in a bunch of different types of genres of music, reggae, even going back to like more old school reggae, like Bear Simons and Sanchez and stuff like that. I'm um, kind of dabbling in that melodic um, you know, section, even gospel, you know, there's still a bunch of current Gospel too. And, you know, that's where I kind of get a soul from it, a lot of my music. Um, and a lot of just older souls, Aretha, The Temptations, you know, Boys to Men, a little further down, earlier. The 90s. Later, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, man, I'm I'm all, I'm all over the place in terms of what it is that I like and what kind of inspires me. Yeah, I like that you're hip hop because when I listen to you rap, especially, it, I like how it's more lyrical, mm-hmm. and it kind of re- it it relates to with all the artists that you brought up there in the New York hip hop scene because that's that's how rap should be. In my I know it's so diverse today with trap, drill, yeah. but I prefer the storytelling New York hip hop, and and then the West Coast did their thing. It it, it was mm-hmm. always more of a lyrical foundation and standard now it's kind of just you get on a beat you could do whatever and yeah do whatever see what happens yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. i mean the ability to kind of to be creative is cool um but yeah i definitely like the the authentic roots of kind of being able to really you know i want people to hear what to hear what it is that i'm saying and you know sometimes i'll get a little bit more melodic and just kind of vibe but sometimes i when i really want to rap wrap up i prefer an open beat and just kind of talk yeah. like undeniable and and then yeah. brothers back yeah we, we i saw yeah. your rap skills on that and i was impressed i was like yeah this guy is yeah you yeah. can do both i'm sure you got because we i mean we, we've we seen what like tory's done with alone at prom and do you have some concept albums on the way is there because I, I feel as though because you're so talented and yeah it's for aspects do you have some concept <laughs> albums that you have on in the terms way? of like locked into a certain sound yeah so different weird. sounds yeah. Um, not really. Not really. Uh, I haven't, I haven't necessarily thought of doing that, but that could be cool. Um, uh, reggae is like a huge, like I'm Jamaican by background. So, um, reggae is like a huge, it's like, it's like the roots of my music. So if I were to do something, I would love to kind of, um, have a lot of samples and that's something they've, they've been doing in hip hop for God knows how long, but, oh yeah, uh, uh kind of, that would be really cool to kind of incorporate a lot of those like reggae, soulful reggae records, um, into some samples and, and beats and stuff like that and kind of build it based off that. I don't really think that's really been done before in the lane I'm in. So that would be cool. 
Yeah. You got you got to get around, especially with, with sampling. You got to find great producers that know how to chop yeah. up the beats. Because I know what today they call it sampling, but all they do is just take the record and throw the trap drums on them, and that's yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> that's not sampling. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Uh, so talk to me about, about your your team of producers because the production, your music, especially with Try On, we'll get on uh, right into Try On in, in a minute here. But talk to me about your your team of producers that you mm. work with. Yeah, no, we've been working with a bunch of different producers. Um, some producers from Canada, uh, from Toronto, Caddy, uh, Morgan Xavier. Um, Try on the beat was actually made by Casper. Okay. Um, in uh, LA, we were out in LA, uh, and he, uh, we went through a couple of records while we were over there, and uh, he sent me a pack, and I heard uh, when I got back, and I heard the beat, and I was like, yeah, it's the one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, we work with a bunch of dope producers um, in different spaces that kind of, you know, allow us to kind of move and move move freely. I love a lot of live instruments. Um, guys like Tony Range does a lot of my post production and um, kind of even just kind of uh, works on melodies with me in terms of like playing, playing like piano, guitar, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. A lot of instrumentalization right there. Yeah, yeah, you sure. mentioned that you were out in LA and you linked the, with, with producers, especially with Tryon. How was your experience in the States? Because the, no, LA was cool. LA was yeah. cool, man. I, I, mean, I think we're going to, going to New York, uh, going to New York. Yeah, the September 14th, your manager was telling me about that. I think yeah, September yeah, yeah. 4th. Yeah, Let me yeah, double sure. check on that. I don't want to lead the... Is this for a performance, by the way? Is, is this for... Um, no, I'm, I'm... September 15th. I, I was a day off. Okay, the 15th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I'm connecting with um, some artists out there. Um, and I think I, we have a couple meetings we got to take. So I'm just doing some business out there. Um, but yeah, no, I'm going to be out there. America was cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's dope. It's, re it's really not Toronto, Toronto, New Yorker side by side and they're very similar culturally so um this is not as far as people think yeah. <laughs> um, really i can offer her, but like, yeah. yeah um yeah man no um la was cool that was my first time in la that was a, definitely a little bit further um that was a dope experience i was only there for a couple of days we just had some meetings we had to take um so that was pretty cool um yeah that was a, a cool experience for sure mm -hmm. how does it feel to be recognized by a publication because i saw so can is that how you pronounce it I yeah, I saw, so, yeah, so so can they, they put you on the the artist to top artist to watch? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, mm -hmm. yeah. How does that feel when you get recognition? CBC too. They did they, they, they yeah. you're on their list as well. Mm. Yeah, no, all those things are cool, man. Um, being recognized by you know, uh, independent or, or or government bodies that kind of you know are, are, their job is to kind of look out and scout for for new talent. It's always dope to kind of be recognized by them. It shows that your hard work's not going unnoticed. Um, so it's always a good feeling to kind of be recognized by these bodies. Um, it's not like anything that defines me per se, um, but it's definitely cool to uh, kind of know that, yeah, people are watching and people are appreciating the music that it is that I'm because that's kind of what it's all about. You know? Yeah. And I think you won an award too for So Can. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. the award. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that was cool. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> the awards and don't matter. You're big on just making your presence known and doing what you love. I get it. Not everyone yeah. is all caught up in the award stage, so. For sure. Have you for thought sure. about relocating to the states at all, or you're you're fully just staying? Um, we've been out, we've been out in the UK. Uh, I have a, a, a in the UK, camp. I did want to get into that. You have UK yeah. experience too. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I lived in the UK for a couple of years, so that would be cool to go back. Um, I wouldn't mind uh, being in the states. Um, it kind of would probably depend on where. Um, if I'm leaving the, the cold winters of Canada, I'd like to go somewhere in the yeah. Go to LA. The, don't don't come. In the get away from the cold. Yeah, the winters are all right. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, for sure. I, I mean, it's not too far either. Um, my sister had lived out in Chicago for a little bit as well. So, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. It's too cold out there too. You got to get away from that. Yeah, cold. It is. It is. It is. It is you know. uh, uh, unbelievable. But yet uh, try on, I do want to get in this cause this is your newest single. Tell me the story behind it. What sparked you to write this track? Well, I was, I was going through that beat, uh, beat pack Casper said, and I heard it and I was just like, Oh, this is super dope. And, um, this was probably in like, I want to say like April or May. Um, and I was fresh off of doing the Undeniable project, uh, releasing that in March. And I was just like, yeah, okay, cool. I, I sat down for like a month and a half after I dropped the project and re put, re put my brain back together because it was obviously scrambled from dropping the tape and doing all the whole, you know, the whole press run and the whole nine yards. And um, I was kind of sitting there and I heard the beat and I was like, this is amazing. I'm kind of kind of trying to get back in the studio anyways. And I just started writing it there. I was in my manager's, uh, my manager's script. Um, and I just kind of started writing it there. Um, and I wanted something fun. I wanted something for the summer. I wanted something that kind of moved people. I was kind of tired of the 
the cold undeniable is a really cold winterish feel um in terms of a lot of the records um so i was like yeah man i want to get something that you know kind of people can move to and people will be excited to hear and i want to kind of channel that uh 2000s vibe with the lloyd uh sample in there and you know that that ashanti and the hoop bamboo earrings and the lip gloss and you know that was kind of what i was feeling for the summer so i'm just like you know authentic like genuine fun so that's kind of how i got the track and them coming together no, and definitely keep that that sound and inspiration because that's when music was that that's an era that I don't know I don't think we'll ever get back again because it was just yeah. so iconic and timeless and that you do have artists such as yourself that are trying to bring that back and do it in your own way and we, we need people mm-hmm. like you that's a, a timeless era for sure and for sure. you know we're going to be seeing that going forward so as far as your writing process goes because you mentioned i mean the samples here with ashanti do you kind of draw inspiration in your songwriting when you're listening to a certain albums at that time or certain artists and then you kind of flip it in your own way what's your process of songwriting I'm always writing songs, even when I'm not writing them. I'm always writing down things that I'm going through, writing experiences down, writing sayings that I hear. I'm, I'm always writing something down. So, you know, people see me always on my phone, I'm writing something down, thoughts or whatever. So uh, when it's time to kind of put pen to paper for a record, I, I'm, I'm able to draw from a lot of my past experiences. Things happen so often in life that, you know, you kind of go by them and you forget about them right after they happen. So it's good to kind of be able to be vigilant kind of see what's going on around you take a step back and watch your life you know it's kind of weird a little bit to take a step back and watch your own life but kind of do that write down lyrics um write down things that are happening write down your thoughts you know your emotions your feelings and um kind of put those towards records so yeah when it comes down to just writing a record i hear a beat that i like and it's easy to kind of just piece everything together you know so do you kind of treat your music like your own form of therapy in a way um, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it depends on what it is I'm trying to get off. But yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes it was just a fun record. I'm trying to have fun. And sometimes when I'm trying to talk, I'll, I'll talk about a lot of stuff I've been feeling about how, you know, treated or what I think about certain situations or what I think about certain things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You mentioned before you were doing the DJ thing. You're obviously a, a talented artist right now, multifaceted, of course. But did you have other interests outside of music at all? I hooped. I was playing. Oh, ball you, play, you, you, you played basketball? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I hooped for a long time. So that was my thing coming up. I thought I was going to the NBA. So that uh, so was my thing <laughs> as a kid uh, into a you know young adult. Uh, that was definitely a big interest for me. That and then uh, then it became DJing. Did you try? Did you play in high school? Did you play in college? Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What what position? I'm shooting guard. Shoot shooting guard. Thing. Okay. I let that fly. <laughs> 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 uh who's your team because you're out and are you raptors fan no i'm not a, i used to be back in the day but i'm not a huge raptors fan I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lebron guy so i see wherever lebron goes i go you're where he at fan yeah i'm yeah. wherever he is where i'm at so i'm support yeah. so right now i'm a lakers fan yeah well we'll see what the lakers are doing i know that lebron how many more years do you think lebron has if you if you had to give an estimation or he could he could he could comfortably do like like at, a, at the clip that he's playing, he could easily do like four more years, five more yeah. years. And if he wants to deplete in the NBA, which I don't think he does, if he wanted to deplete, he could honestly go another like six, seven years. If he wanted to like end up with like a, you know, 15 and 10, 18, and, you know, he could do that at 30, what, 42. Yeah. I have no doubt. But not, he could easily put up 40 a game if he wanted to. Right? So it's crazy. Yeah, he could. He's definitely if he if he stays that long in the NBA, you're not because I mean he's got the scoring. I think he just got the all time scoring record. And we yeah, passed yeah, Kareem there. So if, if he keeps this up, he's got to win a couple more because I know people call him the greatest of all time. I'm I'm a big I, even though I'm a Knicks fan, I still think Jordan's the greatest. You got to yeah. win a couple more rings for me to <laughs> get that title. You got to pass Jordan. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, it's we'll see what the Lakers do and. You know, Tryon's available on all platforms now. Uh, as far as wanting to collaborate with people, who's someone that you want to work with that you feel as though you, you can work with soon? And then someone that's down the road of like a, a GOAT status. Um, somebody soon. Um, I would love to work with like uh, Rod Wave, mm. uh, Rilo, uh, or... Those are like the guys that I think um, sonically sound similar to 
uh, where it is that I'm at in terms of like the melodic stuff. Um, and then like, obviously, you know, guys like Dre. Yeah. Old, if they're still rapping. Yeah. Be, <laughs> true. But uh, yeah, man, those guys. Those guys right there. What's the plan now? Because you got Try On out on all platforms. You're going to be doing another EP, an album. What's Yeah, gonna be yeah, we got something coming. I don't want to be too premature with it, but we got something coming. So I need everybody to stay locked. We have a single coming out soon. I can give you guys that much. Single, new single coming out soon. So keep locked in a lot of music. Uh, it, it's it's fall now, so it's coming into fall. So that's my time to to to, to break out and give people some music to cry to. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be active for all of that for all of winter and fall, and you know we we'll, definitely have a big push coming. So definitely uh, stay locked for that. Exactly. Is is this your favorite time of year, fall, or what's your favorite season? Oh, I know. I mean, su- summer wise, in terms of just the feel and the vibes, but fall in terms of the music, I think fall you get some of the best mixtapes and the best. Um, music in the fall I took it personally you know? and you can keep the vibe most of the time so the music's got to be good enough to keep you keep you engaged you know? exactly and you can keep the winter the the winters the cold unless you're out in LA then yeah. it's a great time if, besides yeah. that it's terrible <laughs> oh but B Rob before we go because this is uh I think this is this like one of your first interviews no I've done a couple interviews you've done a sure. couple interviews some TV interviews, yeah, yeah that's some yeah. radio interviews. Fire. It, I, I did want to get into your name because I always like learning the backstory, how you got B-Rob. It kind of reminds me of John B a little bit, kind of just short <laughs> simple with the initial. Yeah. Um, the backstory there. Yeah, the B the B uh stands for brother back in the day. Um, all my all my friends at high school, I was a good kid, so all of my friends called me brother Rob. So it kind of translated over into B Rob. Um as I got a little old. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's kind of that's where the name kind of comes from. And there you have it, right there, B Rob. Any other things that you have planned for this year on the way that you want to mention that we didn't discuss? Yeah, no, man. Just keep tuned, keep locked. You know, a lot of more, a lot more music coming up. Um, just keep locked in, keep locked into the TikTok. Follow me on socials, B Rob EST, TikTok, Instagram. You know, Twitter. Hit me up. Um, I'm active, man. We're out here, and you know, definitely more music coming, more videos coming, more content coming. So you guys just keep locked. Fire. And he's definitely undeniable. Try on available on all platforms. Go download it. it. Stay tuned to the upcoming single. B Rob, thank you again, man. I hope everything's good too, because I know we had a reschedule from last time. I hope, you know, with everything, I don't want to get too deep into it. But but I hope, you know, you're you're doing good. So thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. And, you know, shout out to Al Nice and shout out to to your manager, you know, for getting us connected. And he's just right. Yeah. Shout out to them. You're doing. Yep. Cool, All right, All B-Rob, right. take care, stay safe, you know, enjoy the rest yeah. of your night. I'm looking forward to the upcoming music. You got to come yes. back, too, once you drop yes, this. Yes, sir, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. we got to do this again, man, so. We'll be in touch, we'll be in touch. Absolutely, man. Take care, right. stay safe, man, all right? You too, thank you. All right, man, peace out. Cool.